Hello there. In one of my last videos, I did an analysis in R and found some valuable insights from that. And I thought I would do the same thing in JASP so you could both see how to use JASP as well as to understand the process that I often do when I'm doing multivariate analyses. So with that, let's go to JASP. All right, so this is the same data set uh, that I used for the other analysis. Wahoo, yay, amazing, that's awesome. And so we're going to start um, by clicking on the visual modeling module. Uh, if you don't have that, you can click over here on the plus button and then click on the plus or the checkbox for visual modeling. And then once you're here, I always like to start in Flexplot. So Flexplot offers a lot more flexibility in plotting, whereas the plots that come with linear modeling, they're not going to be as flexible and you're kind of fixed with whatever they give you. So, we are going to start... I actually don't even remember what the other analysis was, so maybe I'll just make up a new analysis. Why not? So let's go ahead and look at... Oh, I don't know, depression sounds good. And we're going to see if it is a function of IAT total scores and let's go ahead and go HPLP. HPLP is uh, health, if I remember right, and IAT is internet addiction. And so uh, what do we got here? We got a plot that uh, puts them all in the same plot. I like to have them in separate panels. I'm gonna put that down there. Um, just because it makes it easier to, I mean, there's just so much overlap in the other model that it wasn't looking very good. So uh, what are we looking for here? Um, well, what I'm primarily looking for, that red line is the ghost line, and I'm just trying to see if those lines are mostly parallel, and they are. And the second thing I'm looking for is massive curvilinearity. So in here, I don't see any massive collinearity. I see a little bit of a bump right here, which I'm not too worried about. But for the most part, everything is good. One of the points that I made in the R video is it's not a very good idea to just look at one view of the graphic, especially if you are taking a continuous variable and breaking it into uh, three chunks. So basically, all those people are going to get one of the same three scores. That's a lot of compression of data, so we want to avoid that as much as possible, and the best way to avoid that, you can't avoid it, you have to compress it some way, but the way to overcome that limitation is to view it from different angles. So uh, instead of putting HPLP on the panels, we're going to switch it around. We're going to put HPLP on the x-axis and then IAT total scores on the y-axis. And I actually think that was the model that we did before because we got this funky curvilinearity going. And again, what I'm looking for is non-parallel lines and curvilinearity, and I have both going on here. And again, if you looked at one plot, everything looked fine, but if you looked at it from a different angle, everything looked not so fine. So it's very important to look at multiple views of the data. So um, this tells me that we ought to model a curvilinear term and we ought to model an interaction. So to do that, I'm gonna click on visual modeling and then I'm going to click on linear modeling this time. And so I'm gonna use this um, plot right here as a guide. And so again, I'm going to put CESD as my dependent variable, and then IAT total score and HPLP total score. And then Flexplot is going to default to giving us a graphic that looks like this. So it's going to default to linear terms, which we don't want it to do. And so now we're going to try to match what we see here under the model terms. And so the first, let's see. We'll add an interaction, which one? Okay, HPLP. So we're gonna add an interaction there. I'm sorry, a curvilinear effect there. And unfortunately, the plots don't change very much. And again, that's because HPLP scores, the variable that does have a curvilinear effect is has been paneled. There is no way that I can think of that you can change that within the linear modeling module. That's why we have this here. Um, but what you can do is you can go back here and see what it would look like to model that. Yeah, so instead of going fitted lines lowest, we could go to quadratic. And that's going to show us what the fit should look like. Now, I didn't realize until just now we may end up having a complication here, but we'll see what happens. So we've added the polynomial term. Now we're going to add, so to add a interaction, we're going to click on both of those and then add 
add that over there and I actually don't know what it's doing in the background so if you watch the R video you know that um, we had to do some sort of complex uh, polynomial term modeling and I'm not sure what this is going to do but we can find out so if I click on that what is it doing and this actually right here tells you all the terms that it's fitting Oh, ah, ha, 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 ha. I forgot about the very important second step. So we got to go down to visual fitting. Um, so right here, we're telling it that we want to add a polynomial to this term, but now we have to tell it that the fit of the line, because polynomial could be a second order polynomial or third order or fourth order. Uh, basically, are you squaring it or cubing it or fourthing it? Is there a term for that that makes it sound like I know what I'm talking about? I don't know if you know, let me know. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go down to quadratic, and so that's going to add the curvilinearity to it. And then now, like I said, I don't know what this is going to do, but we can look at the model comparisons. So there's a main effect of IAT and HPLP, and then there's an interaction for HPLP and IAT. Hey, I didn't specify that! So it looks like um, JASP actually doesn't know what to do when you click on that, so... That's unfortunate, um, but that's okay. We can just, so what this is doing is it's saying that the linear terms are um, interacting, or in other words, the slope of the lines is gonna be different, but the curvilinearity is gonna be fixed. And unfortunately, we can't fit the model that we really want to fit, um, which we can and are, but that's okay. Uh, we got most of the way there. So now let's uh, spend some time with this graph and see what we're okay so um having run this analysis in r and knowing what the best model probably is and um that is obviously influencing my thought process here but unfortunately in jasp at least currently i'll have to think about a way to do this but currently i don't know how to fit this model in jasp which that's not good and here's the problem we know that the model should look like this but JASP is forcing it to look like this. So um, right now there's no way to correct that. So basically the visual modeling module really leaves us with no other option than to just look at this, unfortunately. I wish we could look at the other plot, but we can't. And so um, it feels kind of wrong to do this, but I'm gonna pretend that this is the right analysis. Even though I know it's the wrong analysis, um, I'm not making like a I mean, if I were to report this and publish this, that would be an ethical problem, but at this point, I know what the right analysis is, and this is just to show you guys how to do it, so I'm not concerned about the ethics so much. I do wish I could fit the right model, but in the absence of being able to do that, let's go ahead and treat this model as if it is the right model, or as if um, both views of the visual look exactly like that. So if I were to look at this, I would say, wow, those lines look pretty parallel. I even modeled the interaction, and the visuals don't have really any bends to them, so that would incline me to say, let's drop this polynomial. But we can use uh, another tool in our toolbox. If we go down to results displays, oh no, it's already there. So we could actually look at the model comparisons. And so what this is going to do is that inverted Bayes factor that uh, tests the model with the interaction against the model without the interaction. And so that is telling you that, well, let me double check. Let me read this note. Semi-partials indicate the effect of removing. Ah, okay, I was wrong. I was wrong, look at that. Uh, that 7.325 is basically comparing the model without the interaction to the model with the interaction. So that 7.325 tells us that the evidence in favor of dropping that term is seven times stronger than the evidence in favor of leaving that term, which matches what the visuals look like anyway. Yeah, it looks to me, if I were to look at the visuals, that yeah, we should probably drop that interaction term. So I'm going to click right here and get rid of it. And now we can do another visual. And so now, um, We've got a new visual that, uh, in the background, it still has that uh, polynomial term. Uh, it's not showing it here, again, because IAT total scores is on the x-axis. But now we could look at the model comparison uh, information. And so we got a Bayes factor of 20 arguing in favor of dropping that polynomial term. Okay! 
So we went from a fairly complex model to a really simple model, again using these biased visuals that we have in Jasp. Uh, not Jasp's fault, by the way, it's my fault. Um, I didn't realize this was a problem until right now. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to make that work. And maybe by the time you watch this video, Jasp will be fixed and you could do a lot more focused interactions and maybe you could even change the visuals. But uh, right now, um, if I'm looking at the data, they seem to suggest that we can drop that polynomial term. And if you want, you could click down here to show the p-values. And these p-values are associated with the same uh, information here. So actually, I'm gonna go ahead and put that back on so we can see what the p-value is for that polynomial term. So again, um, the statistics for each row tell you what would happen if we were to drop that term. And so this p-value says, all right, if we compare a model with that term to a model without it, and assume that they're equal, um, the probability of that happening is 0.7. So the p-value is basically saying in this case that it can't tell any detectable difference between the two models. And if you can't tell the difference between the two models, guess what? You always go with the simpler model. And so Bayes factor agrees, and the p-value agree, and we could also look at the semi-partial Bayes Fact, I'm sorry, semi-partial R squared. So that right there um, tells you that adding that polynomial term explains an additional 0% of the variance. 0% of the variance. So yeah, it's not worth it. So let's get rid of that. Okay, and again, if I didn't know what I knew from doing R, and I just looked at this, I would say, hey, that looks pretty nice. We have a good model, we have a simple model. And then we can now start interpreting, uh, okay, and we see a inverted Bayes factor right here of 5.677, which tells us that the model in favor of keeping HPLP is 5.7 times stronger or better. Or has, the evidence in favor of it is 5.7 times stronger than the evidence in favor of the model that keeps them both, or that drops it. So, um, that's a little on the ambiguous side. Uh, it seems to suggest that HPLP may be able to be dropped. Um, the p-value would suggest that we should drop it. But again, I know that there's uh, that's not the whole picture because we got this curve in here. Uh, but uh, pretending that this is the right model here, we got our regression slopes. So IAT tells you that, well, it's um, both of these are on arbitrary scales, so it's better to look at the standardized beta. So we got 0.3999. So that tells us that if internet addiction increases by a standard deviation, we expect depression to increase by you know 0.38 standard deviation. So that's pretty respectable. On the other hand, HPLP or our health variable, if we increase a whole standard deviation in our health we would expect depression to drop by only 0.06 standard deviation. So it's not all that impressive. So taken together, um, again, if I just ignored the original Flexplot visuals, I mean, that's the good thing about the Flexplot visuals is uh, they kind of overcome some of the limitations of the linear modeling. You do have the flexibility to look at it from different angles, and we know that this probably isn't a good model to use. But if we were just to ignore that flexplot visual, my conclusion at this point would be that there is certainly going to be a linear effect between internet addiction and depression. The more internet addiction you have, the more depression you have, and the relationship with health is minimal to nothing. So basically, at least in this sample, uh, having increased health doesn't seem to decrease depression very much. But this is just one study, one sample, and of course we would have to replicate these findings on another independent sample. So hopefully that helped you understand kind of the thought process I often go through when doing analysis. I'll be sure to be doing lots more of these sorts of things. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments, and I'll see you next time.